Hi, my name is Dr. Harim Jafar. I'm periodontist. Today I will talk about periodontal pathogenesis. Please subscribe to my channel HL Talent to get more videos on this subject. So, uh, this is a long lecture. I'll try to make it as a partition uh, to be more understandable and easy. Starting from introduction, pathogenesis uh, is defined as the origination and development of disease. And it's a step-by-step process that lead to a development of a disease, resulting in a series of changes in the structure and function. It's the process by which the etiological factors cause the disease. Regarding the histopathology, development of gingivitis is very clearly observed from a clinic, clinical perspective. In addition, the changes that occur within the tissue are very obvious when examined under microscope. In broad terms, there is infiltration of the connective tissue by numerous defensive cells, and especially neutrophils, macrophage, plasma cells, and lymphocytes. As a result of accumulation of these defense cells, an extracellular release of their destructive enzymes, there is a disruption of the normal anatomy of the connective tissue and the junctional epithelium. Vasodilation and increased vascular permeability lead to increased leakage of the fluid out of the vessel and facilitate the passage of defense cells from the blood vessels into the tissue, resulting in enlargement of the tissue, which appear erythematous and edematous. From this stage, the tissue clinically is visible as gingivitis. So I'll try to uh, simplify it for you the key features of the histological stages of gingivitis and periodontitis. Actually, we have four stages, or four. Uh, we name it a stage. Uh, we name it uh, uh, grades. So stage one, we have an initial lesion. In case of initial lesion, it takes two to four days. And uh, clinically, uh, in this stage, you cannot see any disease uh, clinically. So there will be slight elevation and uh, uh, vasodilation and vascular permeability. Gingival crevicular flu fluid flow out of the sulcus. And there will be a migration of uh, polymorphonuclear cells like neutrophil in small amounts into the connective tissue across, across the junctional epithelium and into the sulcus. While in stage 2, where the disease becomes clinically visible, it takes 4 to 7 days. There will be increased vascular permeability vasodilation, and gingival crevicular fluid flow. There will be a large number of infiltration by leukocytes, uh, mainly neutrophil and lymphocytes. So here the, the lymphocyte will also predominate in the connective tissue. And this will lead to degradation of fibroblasts, and collagen destruction resulting in collagen depleted area. The area become collagen depleted step by step. And there will be a proliferation of the junctional epithelium and the sulcular epithelium into a collagen depleted area. So there, there will be a step by step atrophying of the connective tissue. In case of established lesion, which takes 14 to 21 days, till this stage, the disease is reversible. And throughout the good oral hygiene care, you can reverse these conditions. So it takes 14 to 21 days. 
uh, it's mostly like a chronic gingivitis in this stage there will be a dense inflammatory infiltrate here there will be a plasma cells and also elevated release of matrix metalloproteinase and lysozymal contents will release from the neutrophils and there will be a significant collagen depletion area in this stage and also formation of the pocket epithelium and also a large number of neutrophils are seen in the pocket well in advanced lesion when this is not treated it will lead to advanced lesion and this advanced lesion means the the time of transition from gingivitis to periodontitis and here there will be a predominance in the plasma cells in lymphocytes in the connective tissue here and there will be an apical migration of the junctional epithelium which try to preserve the intact epithelial uh, barrier and continued collagen breakdown of the tissue and there will be osteoclastic resorption of the alveolar bone so it will start to resolve the alveolar bone also and the disease will become uh, more prominent and going through a periodontitis steps and this is another presentation of the histopathological changes that happen during gingivitis and periodontitis so these are the states let us talk about the microbial virulence factor we know that the the periodontal disease depend that the destruction that happened depends on either the bacteria or the host response both of them are included so we are talking about the main causative factor which is microbial factor and here we are discussing the virulence factor what is virulentus or the, this word in the dictionary means full of poison it's the ability of a microbe to express pathogenicity to express the possibility of making a disease or generating a disease it is also uh, as another de definition defined as a microbial product that permit a pathogen to cause a disease and virulence factor of periodontal pathogen is subdivided into three main categories throughout these virulence factors the bacteria either promote its adhesion on the surface of the host or it secrete toxins and enzymes that degrade the host tissue or it will find a mechanism that protects the pathogen from the host so virulence factors are categorized first depending on the factors that promoting the colonization or adhesion uh, into adhesion invasion bacteriocin and antibiotic resistance while depending on the factors that interfere with the host defense it is subdivided into leukotoxins lipopolysaccharide chemotactic inhibitors and immunosuppressive proteins while depending on the factors that destroy the host tissue into cytotoxin enzymes like collagenase and bone resorption agents so this is an example of leukotoxin which is degrading the periodontal tissue for example when the bacteria secretes leukotoxin which is a virulence factor uh, it will affect on the neutrophil to release the lysosomal enzyme and by itself it will cause a tissue destruction and periodontal destruction well by affecting the lymphocyte by causing cell lysis and releasing of t helper cells 
and to lead to imbalance between T helper and T suppressor and to lead to impaired immunity. Also, it affects the, the monocytes, the macrophage. It will release the cap, cap says, caspase one activation for the T cell death and secretion of interleukin 1B secretion, and also it will lead to impaired immunity. Well, by affecting the erythrocyte, the leukotoxin make the erythrocyte die and degenerate, and they are using it as a nutrient for microbial nutrition. This is the process of main of the one of the bacteria, like Porphyromonas gingivalis, uh, which are using the virulent factors. For example, they are using capsules, which prevent the opsonization by complement and has antiphagocytic activity. That will prevent the phagocytosis by neutrophils and monocytes. Well, they are using fimbriae as a process of adhesion and stain on the surface of the host. Well, another virulent factor which we talked about was is lipopolysaccharide, which has an endotoxic activity, stimulate the host inflammatory response and inhibits chemotaxis and killing by leukocytes. Also, they have enzymes. By releasing these enzymes, it causes a degradation of the, co of the collagen, co uh, of the complement collagen, and the connective tissue ground substance, and also immunoglobulin, thereby destroying the periodontal tissue. So the tools of invasion are lipopolysaccharides, bacterial enzyme and toxins, and fibroids. So these are the introduction, the histopathology, and the microbial virulence factor. And this is enough for today. I hope you see, I see you soon for the other topics like host factors and immune response in periodontal pathogenesis and other topics which uh, helps you to understand periodontal pathogenesis. Thank you for your listening.